So um, I'm Nick Pinkston, and uh, this is my co-founder, the lovely Jeremy Herman. Um, and we're working on a company called Plethora, and we just wanted to go through some of the stuff we're thinking of and then give you a demo at the end to show you this, a glimpse of some of the stuff we just got working <laughs> literally like a few days ago. Um, next, it isn't working, so, okay. Um, so basically right now, I think, I should give everyone a congratulations. I think that this community has actually solved this problem largely. That you can actually, you know, get an Arduino from Adafruit or SparkFun or something. You can go to Pinoco and get your 3D printed enclosures or Shapeways. And then you can go to Tech Shop and assemble it and test it. It's pretty easy to get to a prototype now, um, which is awesome. I mean, that's, that sucked for so long. Um, but the problem is that manufacturing really hasn't changed that much. It's still freaking hard. And, you know, I took a tour, actually, of, of the Ford Rouge River plant, and they had this video about Model T making beforehand. And I was kind of laughing, because we went into the factory, and we were like, huh, this is actually the same thing, but different vehicles and in color. Um, and, you know, it's a, little bit, it's a little bit, you know, more advanced, and there's, you know, electric screwdrivers and all sorts of cool stuff. But, um, but you know, fundamentally, there's, like, a lot of setup costs and everything with this, and you got to, you know, you got to do a lot of stuff that's uh, pretty hard for, you know, a person on a budget. Um, so essentially what I want to come to talk about today is like development environments. And I think this is a huge deal for going from prototype to manufacturing. I think Carl alluded to a lot of the stuff that I'm going to be talking about as well. So when you think of like code, you have some kind of a, you know, this is a text editor, sublime, you might have some terminal open and you can debug in real time. Um, with Inventor, you know, you have Inventor, you can design, you can take your ideas from your brain and put them into a 3D file. And then, you know, next, sublime is kind of the same. You can debug instantly, but now, if you want to debug your parts, you have to talk to this dude, and, and this is an old man. And, I mean, and, and so, <laughs> and so the thing is, is these guys have been in this forever and just know everything. And so you have to call up, you know, this old man who's just the high priest of manufacturing. And you have to come to him in your design and say, okay, where did I mess up? And then you go through this iterative process where he tells you where you're wrong and you keep going. And, you know, this is instant, this is like, you know, you got to call a guy and bug him, and you're not going to do that the entire time, you know, on and on and on. So I want to get past this kind of stuff. So we're looking at where, where, where can we go to do this? And I think the best way is right in front of your face in your CAD. I think that CAD should be like an integrated development environment. You can, you can design stuff. You can pull parts libraries in from something like McMaster for your bolts and something. You can share shit that you've made. You can actually simulate what you've made. You can validate its manufacturing quote to see what your price is, and then say, okay, make this. Um, and so I call this real-time engineering. I think that Steve Ballmer was very prescient. I mean, this is really what you have to focus on for this kind of stuff. We don't want to focus on making all this stuff that's very manufacturing-centric. It should be very engineer-centric. We want engineering superpowers, right? Like, we want to be able to say, give me manufacturing. And, you know, you just want to be able to do this stuff. And then, um, you know, so this is what we're thinking of doing. So we started this company, Plethora, essentially with two different things we want to do. We want to do this kind of design validation, which some of you know as like design for manufacturability, knowing if you can actually make something. And then once you have that, we're going to actually have a factory to make it. So this is the kind of big long-term goal for us. Um, so let's actually try it. This is kind of risky, but Jeremy's actually going to run through a demo, and then I'll sort of just give the play-by-play. -play. Cool. So. No, you're good. Oh, is it the PowerPoint mode? I think so. Let me just restart on this and start it. It's cool. This is what happens when you live demo something. So essentially what you're going to be seeing is Autodesk starting up and then <laughs> Um, <laughs> okay, sweet. So we're saying here that we're making some like camera mount, essentially, and we're just thinking through the design process as we're doing this. So Jeremy's going to actually start by making kind of a base block. You going to have the plug-in up? Okay, cool, sweet. So you open the plugin that we made, and you can see right now it's having this wasteful stock thickness. So essentially what he's done when he made it, he says, oh, this is actually a little bit bigger than a standard sized stock. If you trim that down a little bit, you're actually going to be able, like this, um, to actually have a standard piece of stock and save some money, essentially. So it's something someone would tell you if you were going through this. So then Jeremy's now putting some holes through here just to say, 
you know, add some holes to the figure and we can see what actually happens when you're thinking about doing some holes. So he's, you know, defining the holes. Okay, so you see the hole turns red, indicating, you know, something like red means you cannot do this. And this right now is, it's saying hole diameter too small. So essentially, you know, you can't get a drill bit this small. It's two millimeters. You just can't do this. So then Jeremy goes in and edits this and then you can see it, you know, in real time. Okay, now there's no longer an error and then you're good. And same thing, another hole, we copied it. Cool. So also, you can see over here, the pricing dynamically changes. So every feature, you can tell, like, this hole costs five cents. So if you wanted to delete features, you can actually in real time see every feature cost of this, as well as, like, your setup and then your unit cost. This is DFMing against the line that we have. So this actually knows all the drill bits we have, all the taps we have, all that kind of stuff, and it's feeding into how expensive it is. So you can't get yourself in trouble with this. So you see right now, making this, you know, hole that goes all the way through defining, and then it turns red. And essentially this is because it's too long for the drill bit to go through. So you wouldn't really know that. You wouldn't know like, oh, what drill bits is your company using? That's kind of a low end thing. And they might tell you you can't do this. So then you can go in and actually see, you know, there's an error. And then it just keeps, you know, you can define this. And you can make a pocket like Jeremy's doing to say, okay, let's actually make it so we can get in from both sides. And then we run into, <laughs> oh no. <laughs> okay, three minutes. Okay, so I'm gonna ad lib this entire thing. So essentially what happens is, is we're gonna have, you look at a pocket and the pocket turns red like this, showing that like the inside 90s, you can't do that because the bit is round. This is like a classical thing that people make mistakes on. So then you can go in there and actually round it out and it'll tell you that. So essentially this entire thing is that in real time, you can be designing something and some feature you make can be evaluated for its manufacturability and its cost. You do your cost engineering and the other stuff in real time, and then you press go, and then it goes to the factory. And this factory is, is not like a regular factory. It's not like, oh, we have to like do all this manual stuff. Essentially the factory is reconfiguring itself, so the fixturing, the G-code, all that kind of stuff is generated dynamically. Um, and then it's produced. So we makers can actually have access to kind of professional grade equipment, but this equipment is reconfigurable so the setup times don't kill you, which is the normal you know, problem is a lot of engineering work goes into making these fixtures. We still have some of that, but the computer can take care of a lot of that stuff. So it's kind of a hybrid approach. So I think we're out of time, but um, do you have the end slide? Yeah, if you want to get into our beta, we're gonna be doing this pretty soon. Go to Plethora Labs and give your email, and then we'll tell you what is happening. Thanks, guys. <laughs>